Cherise, welcome to Living Good. I'm your host, Cerise, and I am so happy that you are with me. I have to tell you, we are going good. We are going strong. And I also wanted to take a moment during this segment right here, before we get into the news and everything, to talk to you guys about real estate. The other day, I had someone contact me, and I put a video out on my YouTube channel. And it was about a place that was really, really good. It was for $54,000 U.S. for a condo. And a guy got to me and he's like, Cerise, that's what I'm talking about. Those are the prices that we knew from before the pandemic. And I'm like, those prices don't exist any longer at all. You know, and that went like hotcakes. Now we have one that's available for $74,000, 75000 and you know what? It's a one bedroom. And these days, when it comes to real estate, everything is changing. You see, a lot of people are asking me, why is everything so different? Before the pandemic, a lot of people realized it was a buyer's market. You could buy up property like it was candy. Anything you wanted, you could just negotiate and you could get something at a very cheap price. These days, you can't. During the pandemic, the borders closed down. The president said, we do not want any problems. And everyone went home. A lot of the foreigners went home during the pandemic. Then what happened was a lot of people were calling me on WhatsApp during the pandemic because I stayed. This is my home. I love it here in the Dominican Republic. And I say this on every show because I want to make Los Chiramicos great again. <laughs> I was living in Los Chiramicos and I did not speak little bit of Spanish, nothing at all. Only hola, gracias, and dos veces, por favor. Now I can speak it because during the pandemic, I stayed here. And that is when the prices were low. People were contacting me and they were like, Cerise, I'm so glad I didn't buy that property for $48,000 because when the pandemic's over, I'm going to come and I'm going to buy it for $30,000. And I was like, I don't think so. At all, at all. And then what happened? They weren't able to. Once everything opened back up, the prices skyrocketed. And that's exactly where we are right now for rent and also for condos and villas, no matter where you are, Sosua or Puerto Plata. I was actually personally surprised when Puerto Plata prices started to go up. Cabarete, very expensive. So if you guys are looking to buy, I'm not trying to make you panic. I'm not trying to make you feel like, oh my gosh, I got to do it now. But if you can't do it now, partner with someone and get some money. Get yourself in order and be like, okay, at least I want to get in on the business while it's still at a respectful price. Because I am predicting that Los Chiramicos, El Abate, Playa Sosua is going to go through the roof. Everything is happening right now. And a lot of people are saying to me, oh... That's just been the plans for a long time. And guess what? It has been. And if we've been talking about it for that long, now is the time to do it. We are dealing with a president that does not play around. Louis Abinader is about business, he's about commerce, he's industrial, and he is moving mountains. So right now, it is now a seller's market, which means anyone that had property before the pandemic is making money selling now and they are not selling at lower prices because they know people are coming here to buy like never before this was the highest traffic that we have had in the Dominican Republic this year so I do want to say real estate is really kicking in so guys I also want to say right now I want to introduce you to the news because we have news right now and but we're going to be um, like we have news right now but we're going to be right back and when we come back we are going to talk to russell you guys know russell from taylor may dreams youtube channel he always researches everything and he always has everything for you guys to know and learn here he gives you all the updates on sosua and around so guys thank you so much we're going to be right back with the news See, 
All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me again. This is Living Good. Welcome, welcome so much, you guys. I love that you've been watching. Now we're going to go to the news because I know you guys looked so forward to this segment every single week. We are with my brother right here, Russell in La Casa. Hello, sis. Hello. <laughs> What's happening, Hello, everybody? <laughs> and I hope that everybody is living good and living their best life. So that's, yes. what, that's what we want for you. That's right. All right, so we're going to go to the news now. Y'all know I use a cheese sheet. Miss, Miss Professional, she does not. <laughs> <laughs> that's because I'm chatty chatty but, all the time. Hey, but these are a lot of facts to try to get in your head. Look, I'm, I'm old. I, you know, I'm that's old. That's true. They are facts. And I, I would be doing the same thing. So you go ahead and use those cheat sheets. All right. So the Ministry of Labor, and this is very important because a lot of people down here use um, hired maids to clean the house, take care of their kids, nannies, and everything. Absolutely. And they have a very, very strong organization um, as far as labor. So this is very important. So the Ministry of Labor um, is, going, is going to issue a resolution for domestic workers to have hours, minimum wage, um, vacations, benefits, um, the whole nine yards. And they're doing this because they know that most of the sector is made of women. And they want to make sure that um, their their rights, um, th their working rights, are not compromised. Um, so I think it's actually a very good thing, especially oh. for the ladies who are actually working hard. I know the lady that cleans my house works very hard, and everybody says, "Man, you overpay your pay." I said, "No, I see the work that she does." My mother was a uh, um, domestic worker. Really? So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what I have to say, because it's so important what Russell is saying right now, and I am also like, mm -hmm. this is amazing, because some women, they will come and they will clean your house, and nobody cleans like a Dominican woman. A Dominican woman knows how to clean, am I correct? Absolutely. And she will clean your house, and most people think they can only pay 10, 500 pesos, which is yeah. 10 bucks, or 1,000 pesos. 1,000 pesos is the going rate, actually. Yeah. And, and some people think if they have a really messy place, they can do that. So this is amazing. What is, did, did they say what the minimum wage was going to be? Um, no, they're still putting that together. Okay. Um, but believe me, it's going to come out soon. And like I said, I, I personally, I think it is a good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm all about that. All right, so now Santiago, I don't know if any of y'all know that Santiago is building a monorail that is set to be finished by the end of 2024. Major, major news. So President Abernathy said this should affect over 500,000 people living and working in Santiago. Woo! Yeah. What? That's hot. What? Yeah. President Abernathy. <laughs> Louis Abernathy. <laughs> building a monorail. He's living. Yeah. A monorail. So the monorail will be from Santiago, which is like two hours away. Right. Well, no. Well, it's about an hour and a half away. But, okay. but but the monorail is just basically getting you and moving you around Santiago. So, so like a subway above ground. Uh, yes. Wow. Yes. yes. That's it, big. It, yeah, it may be underground. I don't know. Um, they, the way I read it, they didn't go into all the specifics. They just wanted to announce the news, um, announce that it is happening. Me, I'm waiting for them to mm -hmm. to drill through that mountain so that it take that 30 minutes from Porta Plata <laughs> to Santiago. Now that's what I'm waiting for. And they do have that little thing going on now, but that's big, a monorail. So yeah. that means a lot of people that pay for the guagua mm -hmm. and that public car, they're just going to pay for public transit. Yeah. And, and, and it's it, going to be a lot faster. And it's definitely going to affect that sector, too, as far as the guagua, the public or taxis. So um, mm -hmm. I'm quite sure they're working all that out. But it is coming, and like I said, 2024 is around the corner. So that's it's, it. it's coming fast. Mm -hmm. So it's coming fast. Also, um, so there are new flights from Portugal um, that will be coming into Santo Domingo. Mm. So, which is really cool because I always wanted to go to Portugal. So now I don't have to fly back to the U.S. I can actually fly. I can actually drive up to Santo Domingo. So, the Civil Aviation Board approved request for special permission um, in favor of the operator Orbes to start flying from flights from Portugal to Santo Domingo. I think that is major. And I think a lot yeah, of other countries now so. are going to um, put in 
um, their permits to fly directly into um, in, into Dominican Republic. Right. Panama is like a really big hub where a lot of um, international mm -hmm. flights fly into, and then from Panama, they fly from Panama directly into um, Dominican Republic. Wow. So I, I, I think if they're doing that the, a direct flight, I think that's a fantastic thing. And for people like so. us who are travelers, yeah. you know, now I can take direct flights to Portugal or Spain, hopefully, you know, right. without going through, you know, two or three flights. So I think right. that's major. And Portugal is quite amazing that it would be Portugal it is. too, right? Yeah, because you, some people would think, oh, Colombia mm -hmm. or somewhere else, but all the way from Portugal. Yeah, right. and, and Portugal has a very strong expat community as well. So ah. for those who are interested in just seeing mm. what other expats are doing, um, you know, uh, if you could take a direct flight, I mean, I, I think that's a major game changer. I, I really think so, do. too. Yeah. I think so, too, because we're going way more international, not just from America, Canada. Exactly. Wow. They, yeah. they, I, Louis happened that day. He, he's Brother, moving. Show he's, he's moving. He's yeah. moving. Yeah, so that's big it. shout out to the press. Yeah. All right. So um, also, like I reminded everybody last week, so I want to remind everybody again, the Retire Investment um, Conference in DR is being held in Santo Domingo, May 6th and May 7th at the International Hotel. And it's only $99 per person and $149 per couple. Um, I'm we're still waiting for them to give me all the details. They promised me that I'll have all the details by Friday, so I'll be able to go into more of a lengthy conversation about that conference. But I think the conference is going to be awesome because they're going to have people there that can talk to you about um, as far as financing, because that's a big question. You know, that is. you and I are both are in the real estate game down here. Yeah. And mm -hmm. everybody's always asking about financing and the interest rates and everything. So now you'll be able to talk to people directly. There'll be attorneys there, so if you're mm -hmm. interested in residency, um, investment residency, so that, you know, if you do buy that $200,000 house or whatever, um, you know, how does that affect your residency? Does it speed it up? So all those questions that people call and write me and Cerise, you'll right. be able to go to Santa Domingo for, you know, those two, that two-day conference and check it out for yourself. So I think that is really awesome. And the price, you can't be $99. That's really good. Right. And, and this, again, just say the conference is for what? The conference is the Retirement Investment Conference. Retire Retirement, Retirement Investment Conference. Investment because investment. a lot of you guys are retiring and you're coming here and you want to know how you can invest. You know what, Russ? Mm -hmm. I heard today that some people are just paying cash for their condos and you can't do that any longer. Whoa. You have to I pay. I did not hear that. Right. I heard this only today. So this is another game changer. Wow. Like the Dominican Republic is really amazing right now. So mm -hmm. what they're saying is no more paying cash for your condo. If you want to own this, you have to do it through a bank transfer, so mm -hmm. everything is a trail. Wow. Everything okay. is like, there's a trail of yes. money that you can say, yes, I bought that, and you can prove. So there's no more battling back and forth. Okay. You know? Yeah. No, that, that is major, and that is a game changer, yeah. so, you know, I just uh, heard a that lot today. of those little deals going on <laughs> in the back and room. And then you don't get your lending, and then you don't get your title. Now you actually have proof that you pay for something mm -hmm. and then you do get your dislende, you get your title and if Absolutely. not then you can at least prove that you paid for your property that's major that's mm -hmm. major and you got to remember when you buy property 200,000 and above you have to pay taxes on it I mean you have to pay taxes on whether you buy a property or not but 200,000 above you have to um, talk to a professional because you got to pay taxes on that every year so have they changed anything about, let's say, like with my property, my property is not worth 200000 probably 100000 um, But I've heard that, you know, property yeah. under that 200000 you don't have to file the taxes every year. So I'll check more into that because I know a lot of people are in my same position. And when I first right. purchased, that's the way it was. Because a lot of people before the pandemic bought very inexpensively. But do exactly. you mean for property tax? I mean property tax, yeah. So if something is over $200,000? $200, Yes, Dominican Republic wants their tax dollars. That's it. And by right. Yes, absolutely. By right, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Two hundred that something. Yeah. Okay. Two hundred thousand, that is that threshold. And speaking okay. of taxes, if you're from Canada or the US, you you still gotta pay taxes if you're not 
in your own country. So, because uh, a, a few people have asked me that, and they said, well, Russ, since I moved down here now, do I still have to pay tax? I said, where's your money coming from? They said, the U.S. I said, yes, you got to pay tax. To the you, U.S.? Yes, you still right. got to file, no matter whether you have an address here, but a lot of people are still using addresses back in their own, you know, in, in their own country and different states. But yes, you still have to pay taxes. What about in Canada? In Canada, well, I file my income tax every year since I've been here. Okay. So I don't, I don't know anyone that hasn't. And even during like the pandemic, some yeah. people they collected CERB. I, yeah. That was like I, I don't know what that stands for. Really, Canadian mm -hmm. something. I didn't collect it. You guys know that, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I, I wasn't foolish enough to do that. Hey, I connect. I can. I collected my fourteen hundred dollars. They were giving away. Hey, I'm well, still a citizen. If I'm he, paying taxes, I want my money too. Right, but also because you are a retired vet and right. you, you you do right. But I was like, you know what? Because in Canada, when they had this Serb stuff, mm -hmm. you you couldn't be making any amount of money at all. Oh and wow! So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm here. I wasn't on Canada or land or anything, mm -hmm. but. They are, I do my taxes every year. Right, right, but even though you're not in Canada, you still pay Canada taxes, correct? You have a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one point. That's one point. I, I, I'm not living in America, but I'm still paying well, taxes now. every year. So I, I want right. my money also. So anyway. You, you know what? You're right. File yeah. your taxes. Don't don't get in trouble. Don't right. Don't file get in your trouble. taxes. File your taxes. File your taxes. Do what you got to do. Um, you know what? A lot of people are retired here, and it's just easy peasy for them to do that anyway. It is. It is. I do yeah. all mine by by teleconference and and right. um, scan and email. So right. I don't go home. I I, I right. don't go to America to file taxes. Online, they can do it. Canadians can do it online yeah. too. Yeah. 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 And I you know because even during the pandemic, those two years, I never went back to the U.S. So yeah. Use technology, please. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Use technology. Okay. Uh, now I got I got a trivia question for you. So we're gonna do a All trivia right, question. Let's do week. trivia. So what is the cheapest month to fly into Dominican Republic, where you get the cheapest tickets? Okay, I'm gonna say two months. Uh, wait. Okay. June or September. You are correct in June. Yeah. June. June. Okay. <laughs> June is the is the least expensive month that you can catch a ticket, catch mm. a break, especially <laughs> <laughs> and flying into Dominican Republic. So if you're one of those people who, you know, count every dollar, count every penny, nothing wrong with that. Um, June, that's when you get that's when you get spurred just a, just a little more because you'll have a little more to spend because your price ticket went down at least maybe a hundred hundred and fifty dollars, mm. and that and, you know and that's still money, you know. That's still money. And it's important because if you do want to come in June, a lot of people don't want to travel during June because mm -hmm. they're like, it's the Dominican Republic and it's hot, and why would I want to travel during uh, June if Canada and the America, beach, the beach, the exactly. beach, <laughs> and not only that, who wants to go? Airbnbs are cheaper here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right? Everything's yes. cheaper here during June. It low is. Low season here. It is. Okay. You got to catch it then. You're right. That's um, why it's cheaper because it's low season. Not a lot of people are coming in during June. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk about some things to do here on the North Coast where we're at. Do, ah. you, do you know you can still catch a, the latest movie out right here in Puerto Plata? Have you mm. been to the movie theater in Cinepop? No. Okay. If you, if you go I on Facebook... To. All right, you, there, there's a listing of the movies that are in it, or in the, that movie theater, and they are in English as well as in Spanish. So you just have to read the fine line to make sure you go at the right time. But so you have Cinepop, you can catch a movie, do a, do a date night, you know, movie night, date night is pretty yeah. popular in the United States. Um, as well as um, they got ATV, that you can rent a yacht for a party, you can rent a, a yacht in, inexpensively. Rent a yacht mm. for a party, rent a yacht for um, a fishing, good. or rent a yacht to just get away from everybody <laughs> you know, right. whatever you want to do uh, mm -hmm. and these things are very very inexpensive I mm -hmm. promise you if you do it in Florida you're going to be kicking out an arm and a leg and yes. then they'll ask for your gut too So, <laughs> and it is because fishing is a lot more amazing here as it well than, I'm not saying anything about Canada or America but it is a lot less expensive mm -hmm. when you are fishing here and you don't know what you're going to catch. There's mahi-mahi, there's dorado, there's mm -hmm. tuna, mm. there's all kinds of stuff you can get. Mm -hmm. all, all the stuff I like eating. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. But, uh, 
Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, babe. But you were saying as well there for a second. What was that you just said? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Oh, about the the, the movie or the movies. The ATV. I haven't been to the movies. You yet. haven't been to the movies? No. It's a, it's, a, it's you know it's not a upscale movie theater, right. but it is but it's nice and wow. it's, you you can take a date to the movie popcorn right. and dinner for you know forty bucks. In America, a movie night is going to cost you 200 plus. I'm really? telling you. I'm not even really? joking. Oh, wow. 200 plus. I could do that here for under $40. And they're the popular movies that you're seeing yes. around the world. The same ones that, they, that, they, that you're seeing in Canada, America, Norway, wherever, is the same ones that they play right here in Puerto Plata. It's right there in wow. Playa Dorado. Wow. Right. Yeah. And, and so now, what if the, are there subtitles on some of the Spanish? Like um, I believe there are subtitles, but a lot of movies are in English. Oh, I guess. Because it's right there on the resorts. And when you go in, just tell them that you're going to the movies, and they'll right. let you, they'll let you in, right? Drive right into Playa Dorado. Okay, date night. Yeah. With whoever. <laughs> I'm single. Hey, I still think it's pretty cool. Okay. I'm not. I'm not single no more, you know. No, because so he just had a little baby. <laughs> How's Amber doing? She is fantastic. The joy of my life. Yeah. Uh, First thing I do in the morning is look at her. The last thing I do at night is kiss her goodnight. So. I've been seeing some beautiful pictures of Amber on Facebook. I, I, I know. I, you know, I, I was hoping I didn't turn into one of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know, I, I'm out now, and I'm like, hey, look at these pictures. <laughs> but, but it's so important, and we do love it. On Facebook, we do love seeing a baby grow and yes. it's so important you know and how old is amber now two weeks uh she is 18 days old oh yeah 18 oh, days old beautiful yes. love of my uh, life love of my life oh uh, <laughs> if you guys want to see what amber looks like she's so cute she's so beautiful the last photo you put out she has a little yellow outfit on mm -hmm. right and amber is her name just like amber coast of puerto plata yes and you guys can check them out on taylor made dreams yep. youtube channel yep well go to you, you go to right my face i mean um uh, my youtube channel yeah i did one with yep. stevie wonders um beautiful song isn't she lovely and he right. wrote that right after the birth of his daughter and i thought that was the perfect song so i threw a bunch of pictures on there nice. and i'm included into the video so you know it's right. something that she'll look back and say you know my daddy it was pretty cool you know for, for an old cat he was lovely. all right <laughs> really on facebook too that yes. you're always updating what's your name on facebook like russell, taylor. Right here, russell yeah. taylor russell taylor right that's it and they can go you guys go check them out go you know stalk them right now creep them and look on Facebook because the photos are so beautiful. It's always thank beautiful you, to you. see a little baby. Absolutely. But come on, we have to talk about this subject. Okay, what? <sighs> the slap her and seen around the world oh, at the no. Oscars. Come on. No. You know what? I do have to say you called it out because we're on a WhatsApp group together and um, on the WhatsApp group I was like, I can't believe Will Smith did that. But you said, you said, he looked at his, he laughed. He laughed at first. And now go, what happened? He, he laughed at first. Then he looked at his wife do that side eye like, are you going to let him say this about me? Right. And he went up there, walked to the steps. And this is the crazy part. At what point did something not click in and say, this is not, um, this is not cool. This is something that you don't do. This is how you don't embarrass yourself. Because let's say if this was a court of law, right? And let's say if you were going up for, uh, I hate to sound doom and gloom, but a manslaughter charge versus a, a, first, a, a first degree murder. Mm -hmm. I already know what he would get because that hesitation, that laughter, and then those steps you had to walk up, mm -hmm. that was premeditated. So, mm -hmm. um, but crazy. The, the one, I mean, the night of his, the biggest night of your life that when you reach the pinnacle, the coveted award. Right. And that's the only thing people are going to talk about. I don't remember. Yeah. I watched the Oscar. I don't remember anything else except really that. Right. That's the one standout. Right. I love how you say the coveted award because he it was is. up for the, what, actor of the year? Or? Yeah, got nominated three other times. Right. And, and never did it. But this was the one. And it, it, for me, it's kind of crazy because I know, um, you know, I've been in a situation where I kind of getting ready to lose my temper and 
you know, um, my, I was married to my, my, my ex-wife, kind of like reached over and like, uh, right. uh, baby, mm -hmm. slow it down, oh, baby. slow it down, slow it <laughs> down, right. take it back, take All it right. back, you know, and, and you know, I, I don't know, you know, it, it, you know, everybody's playing, you know, Monday night quarterback, but everybody do agree that that was absolutely um, uncalled for. Yes. And I'm like, did you I hear agree. what, um, what's that comedian from, uh, used to be on, uh, on NFL. Um, I, I got his face in front of me and I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a, one of those old, old moments. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jim Carrey. I saw that. Jim, they asked Jim Carrey, if that was you, what would you do? He said, not only would I have him arrested, I'd be suing million. him for $200 million. $200 right million, dollars, he said. So I would agree. Yeah. And you know what? I'm sure this is going to go on and on for the next oh, yeah. couple of weeks. But next week, let's do a wrap up on that because okay. we're, we're going to see where this guy's head is then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We have to say thank you so much, Russ. Not a problem. All of this love, information. It, love it. Love it. I look so forward to more information, guys. You know, Russell always hands over the news every single week on Living Good, and he does his research. And please join us next week because Russell is on every week giving the news about Sosua and the Dominican Republic and all of the updates because we have a wonderful president right now that is making sure the Dominican is more than what it was. That's right. Well, that's right.